this diagram, which represents an atypical situation where we've got a three-phase power supply, a contactor, overload relay, and finally, our three-phase induction motor, which happens to be the squirrel cage motor. The numbers on the whiteboard here, 1, 2, 5 and 6, and 9 and 10, represent the numbers for the normally open contacts of this four-pole contactor that is currently in use with the LaVolt system. The same could be said for the overload relay. The numbers that are represented on each of the three phases represent the contact points that a student would find on the device themselves. Now, what's nice of the overload relay is that these contacts are also color-coded. So one and two represents one set of overload heaters, which is represented up here in our diagram. Now, when it comes to the squirrel cage induction motor, you'll notice that this is wired in what we would call the Y configuration. Each one of these represents a set of windings. So I have one set of windings, two, and three. Now, the first set of, uh, the one side of each of the windings must be connected to the power source, represented by these lines coming from the overload heater. So we are going to power up the first winding, but if we don't do anything here, then the motor will not function. Both, all these windings have to be tied together. So if we follow the wiring diagram, terminal one gets power, terminal four is going to be terminated to terminals five and six in order to create what we call this Y connection. Likewise, for terminal two, it's going to get its power source as well as terminal three. Using the diagram on the whiteboard as an example, I'm going to model or demonstrate how to wire the contactor, overload relay, and finally the motor. First things first, we're going to get started with some blue test leads. And we're going to start by uh, running from the power supply to the contactor, from the contactor to the overload relay, from the overload relay to the motor. First thing, I'm going to go from terminal one and going to contact the first contact, number one. Terminal two, second contact, which is normally open, terminal five. Terminal three from the power supply to terminal nine, so that there's three normally open contacts. In an effort to keep my wiring as clean as possible, I'm going to use the shortest leads. That means I'm going to be using the yellow leads. We're going to go from one side of this contact to the first of the overload heaters. So from terminal two to one, the second phase or second contact to terminal three, and terminal 10 to the blue phase. Now, all that remains is to add the leads from here down to the motor. From terminal two of the overload relay, or red, to the red phase. The black phase to the black phase. The blue phase to the blue phase. And you'll notice right here at the motor, I've only wired one side of each of the windings. We can see that the motor, all three phases have been wired, but each end of the windings is left in open. If I was to power this up and attempt to operate it, the machine would not turn. According to the diagram, this machine was supposed to be wired in a Y configuration and that terminals four, five, and six had to be connected together. Using the yellow leads, I'm going to connect terminal six to five, go in reverse order, terminal five to terminal four. Now, I'm gonna power up 
the power supply, I'm going to force the contacts closed on the contactor for the purposes of a demonstration. And I'm going to power up the machine and we can see that the machine is in operation. I'm going to disconnect one side of these windings and pull the yellow leads. I'm going to depress the contactor and let's see what happens. Nothing, because I have an open circuit. Until next time, stay safe.